Welcome everybody to your Get Your Geek On's gaming podcast. I am your host Aaron and we will be talking everything Resident Evil like today and give you a brief history as well as some information about the new game that dropped which technically is a remastered. Well, not technically it is though. It is Resident Evil 3 remastered or remake uh, which just dropped this past week. So we thought we would give you the complete rundown of everything Resident Evil like and our my take on the Resident Evil 3 itself. So the franchise has been around since 1996 with the original Resident Evil uh, coming out for the PlayStation 1 with our main protagonist being Chris Redfield and Jill Valentine. We have had 13 other games since then with other uh, main protagonists such as Leon Kennedy, uh, Claire Redfield, Barry, to an extent, kind of dies really easy, spoiler alert. And we've had a bunch of other characters throughout the series and the main antagonist being Wesker up through Resident Evil 5. So the brief history of all of this, since I mean the games have been around for 24 years, like I said 13 games actually in the main storyline and about 20 plus games in the expanded story where some of those are not technically canon i believe or they're just uh side stories that don't really involve anything they don't progress the storyline they don't go over anything uh so you get all those kind of ones as well so capcom has been trying to make this game work since then when 1996 happened there was no real horror genre for video games most people crediting resident evil as the game that brought it out uh, that is up for debate because there are other there was one other game that may have uh taken that place and been the true entry into horror genre for video games but that's another story about horror and video games so after resident evil one's a success i mean that nailed it people loved it people ate that up We had Resident Evil 2 come about two years later uh, in 1998, which now we starred more about Leon Kennedy uh, being the rookie cop. And of course, uh, you have the other protagonist in that one, which would be Claire Redfield looking for her brother. Uh, After that, we had Resident Evil 3 Nemesis come out just a year later uh, after Resident Evil 2. And this one follows Jill Valentine. And then from there... We have some games that are questionable of whether they follow the main canon or not until uh, 2000's Resident Evil Code Veronica. Um, and Code Veronica, that one, it's kind of, it's the fourth installment and it follows Chris and Claire, but a lot of people kind of consider that another Resident Evil 3 because it was made alongside the Resident Evil Nemesis, which got the actual three in the title, where this kind of was just like a side story, they say, with it. Uh, We got a few other games that didn't, again, didn't fall in there. And these games, uh, just to kind of give them a quick shout out, was Resident Evil Survivor, uh, Resident Evil Gaiden, Resident Evil Survivor 2, Code Veronica, uh, and a Resident Evil remake. And all those came out between 2000 and 2002. So you had these ones that really People had, and they kind of just bought time until the next Resident Evil's kind of thing would come out. Uh, following main story, we have Resident Evil Zero in 2002, and then we come back to a. So Resident Evil, let me actually backtrack. Resident Evil Zero was a prequel to Resident Evil One, following a medic, and not very liked by most people. Uh, that one had some new characters come out: Billy Cohen and uh, Rebecca Chambers. And I don't know. I have my own issues. We'll get back to some of these games in a minute. Uh, then we had Resident Evil 4 in 2005, Resident Evil 5 in 2009, uh, Resident Evil Revelations in 2012, Resident Evil 6 in 2012, uh, Resident Evil Revelations 2 came out in 2015. And then that brings us up to the newest one that's continuing the story in Resident Evil 7 Biohazard, or just Resident Evil Biohazard to some people. So that kind of gives you the main games. Like I said, there's a ton, about another 12 or 13 games that are uh, side stories or they don't actually like coexist with everything. So yeah, there's a whole thing. So Capcom has been working, like I said, since 1996 to get these games to be perfect. The first games involve these tank kind of controls. Uh, they use actual photorealistic backgrounds to where basically they 
layered everything with photos instead of actually 3d rendering everything which is really cool it gives you that more realistic feel and they kept that going for most of their games there's a few games uh in the main story arc that derived from that kind of like i think resident evil 4 and 5 went away from it but uh, the rest of them use that that photorealistic look which made the games look beautiful not saying that 3d rendering is bad and all but it just sometimes doesn't play well for the horror genre to me at least whenever you want that real realistic and you want everything to pop and those particles and everything to just look beautiful because you want to draw people's eyes away from where they can get scared and hopefully do jump scares and other stuff to scare the crap out of them thank you liquors and dogs jumping out of windows and ceilings i digress that's just me dealing with the zombie apocalypse so guys um i wanted to talk about this so we've had games for in this genre or in this uh, franchise, I should say, that have been the typical horror genre where it's trying to scare you, a little action, but then we've gotten games like Resident Evil 4, 5, and 6, which were more and heavy relying on the action and not so much the horror. Resident Evil 4 brought some horror to it to me, using Leon Kennedy as the main protagonist, uh, being a special agent now who received special training since Resident Evil 2 and he's protecting the president's daughter and he finds a new version of the virus that's out rather than the uh, ones we've been dealing with so if you don't know i guess i should explain this the game itself follows zombies it follows the umbrella corporation who is a pharmaceutical corporation who has now uh, created a few different versions of this virus the so-called the original one the t virus which would turn people into essentially zombies uh, we have the G-Virus coming around, and then we have uh, the Plague, I forgot the correct name for it, I apologize. But those other ones were, from 4 on, from 4 to 6, we see the Plague Virus, which uh, has a different name, I just don't want to try to pronounce it, to be honest. So, uh, they, they've changed it, but there's always a virus involved, and it's always Umbrella behind it, who's trying to either, it, depending on who you look at, they're either trying to have eternal life or power because there is actually two antagonists one being uh, Wesker I'm sorry who is from Resident Evil 1 essentially all the way up until Resident Evil 5 and then we have the doctor who ends up being killed in Resident Evil 2 so those are actually our main or antagonists and we really don't get anything else uh, enemy wise we get a few other people here and there but no one as remembering or as remarkable i guess i'll say as wesker and the doctor uh, and of course they are the main ones in the lore because of the actual storyline you also have the twins uh another doctor as well who comes out later as an older gentleman uh, there is a lot of other ones, but they're more behind the scenes, and you don't see them until later games, unless you read every single piece of paper you picked up, unless you played pretty much all the side ones and got a little more information here and there through Code Veronica and some of the side ones, uh, such as Revelations and all that. So, I don't know. There's To me, it gets kind of convoluted as the games go on, but that's what happens after 24 years. But the main thing you need to know is Umbrella... The stars team which is chris redfield and his group uh and, and the zombies essentially because that's all this is revolving around genetics and a virus so guys the franchise 24 years i mean there's not many franchises that can say they've lasted this long i mean we got Mega Man, mario uh star fox uh who else uh, sonic you know legends of or zelda i should say you know we have a few so to me that's a milestone so i'll give them a round of applause for just being able to to me to get that mark of yes we have zombies we've have umbrella we've had ups we've had our downs we've had one director for so many years who left because of differences we had one producer who's still with us one guy you know this that and the other they brought in screenwriters from movies we have a western feel they've done everything in this franchise to make it different and to make it fun now do they have misses oh gosh there's tons of misses a lot of these games in between that are not part of the main storyline never did well they never got the um awards i should say that the other games have so 
they've tried the railgun now what uh, railgun shooters what that is is basically think of your old school arcades you go out to your arcade or your you know bowling alley or wherever you can play arcades at and they have those uh, games where you hold a gun and you shoot at a screen and it kind of moves you on its own you don't get to choose a path those are rail guns so resident evil has had those and they're not very fun you know you lose a lot of the mystery the suspense and all of that that everything has to offer you so with that being said they they kind of fell short on all of that so they have gone to that they've gone to like i said more action in four five and six to more horror and scares in one two three and even seven now i think they realize they need that scare factor and let's go back to our roots of horror so you know we'll see where the series can play out and where it could go so i know i kind of gave you a brief background of everything of the franchise of the games that have come out and i really recommend checking them all out at least in the main storyline with uh resident evil 1 through 7 uh code veronica being in there as well uh Reve revelations 1 and 2 uh those are all amazing games and i really think you should check those out and you know get an idea if those are games you want to play but I would say now that we're we're, we're kind of caught up, we got you to where we want you. We have all the games. In 2019 and 2020, we've had two remakes, Resident Evil 2 and 3. Resident Evil 2 being one of the most famous Resident Evil games alongside Resident Evil 1. And Resident Evil 3 with Nemesis, which had a few issues, but was also well acclaimed. So why are they going to remakes? Well, in theory, they're probably waiting to get Resident Evil 8 out which there's been a lot of rumors of uh, what exactly Resident Evil 8 will consist of uh, supposedly rumor has it Chris Redfield may turn evil after he's been our main protagonist for the last you know 20 years plus so we'll see where it could go my thinking is this though they're delaying everything because well not delaying but they are making these remakes to hold us over until 2021 2022 and when they can drop resident evil 8 they're trying to also probably see how well people are still responding to the horror genres uh, resident evil 2 are remakes these are not just remastered ones being sent out to the consoles they have tweaks to the mechanics they have new areas they have uh, updated like some of the graphics they've updated where some of the items are some of the doors that were closed are now open giving you more of a feel of a brand new game versus just hey here's the old game and we updated the graphics continue these tank controls no you get more of that over the shoulder kind of shooting it's been a lot more fun than i thought it would be and probably one of the best remakes i've seen in a long time now my thinking too is i wonder if resident evil 8 is going to take place sometime after three and four or between three and four because why are you releasing two and three remakes and not a resident evil one you could argue that Resident Evil 1 was remade on the GameCube, gosh, about 12 years ago or so, 13 years ago, maybe a little bit longer. So you have those, so maybe that's the argument, like, oh, well, most people just replayed in the last 10 years, 15 years, maybe, uh, Resident Evil 1, so we need to just do 2 and 3 so everybody can get a good idea, because I promise you, this game is not going to make me go revisit Resident Evil 1. The... The game is beautiful on the GameCube. They did a great job of remastering it, but again, that one, the controls are a little off, and I didn't like some of the stuff they did. But Resident Evil 3 so far is hitting a nerve for nostalgia. It's hitting the horror genre that I've been loving for the last 20 years of playing video games. You know, we have uh, Alone in the Dark was one of the best uh, franchises I've ever played. Uh, we have Led for Dead 2, which is more campy, but I still liked it, Dying Light, and so on. So now after 20 years, I think they're realizing the horror, is, horror is in, and I can't talk today. So guys, I think you should go pick up Resident Evil 2 and 3, check them out, see how they play to you, and if they're worth the remake. I think they are. I think if you want to get a good idea of a storyline, 2 and 3 are also great to pick up on. Um, I probably would say just watch highlights of Resident Evil 1 or go read up on the storyline from Resident Evil 1 so that way you know, okay, well, this is what 1 was about, this is the mansion they're talking about, this is Raccoon City, these are the stars team, this is Wesker. It'll give you a lot of the background, but Resident Evil 2 and 3, 
can stand on their own. I don't think I need Resident Evil 1 to know what happened. I, it would just add to the story and to the plot and get that narrative pushed along if that's what you're looking for. If you want a really good fleshed out story, play 1 or read up on 1, then play 2 and 3. If you don't mind, just want to play some horror video games, go straight into 2 and 3 and you'll be fine. Um, so guys, on that, I don't. this one's going to be a little bit shorter because it is just me today. I don't have any co-host. So my main thing is, guys, the horror genre is still alive, and sometimes Capcom, I think, forgets that. I think that they forget people love these games no matter how uh, small they think they're hitting that niche, no matter what happens. I think they forget that sometimes. So support these games, guys. Go check them out. Go pick them up and see if this is something that you yourself want to enjoy and get into and i recommend playing it in the dark and maybe have a buddy with you and you know scare them if you have a significant other maybe play with them see if they can get scared and cuddle up on you you know um there is one huge drawback i do uh say on this one the thing being is that they came out with a multiplayer game so on the multiplayer game they they're trying to copy i don't want to necessarily say battle royale style but it seems like what they're doing they it's basically a survival game it's 4v1 essentially one person is what they call the mastermind and the others are the survivors uh that are trying to get out so I don't know guys like this one was a huge miss for me and I like these kind of games like I like Dead by Daylight and Dying Light I like all of those ones and I think the one I loved the most uh, was Friday the 13th which one player was Jason and the rest were the survivors so my thing is this didn't hit hard and I don't know there it t took a while to get a game going first it felt like there wasn't a lot of people in there, and it that bothers me. So to me, that that tells you there's not a lot of people wanting to play. Because if there was a lot of people wanting to play, they'd be in there immediately, and I could find a game in less than a minute. It took me about three minutes to find a match the first time, and then I think I was with the same people for the next two or three matches because it was loading instantly, because I think all of us were loading right back in. Um, it's, I don't know guys, it's not one I think we should have had. I think they should have taken that one away completely and just focus on the game itself. But that's just me because again, this, this was not fun. There's no cross-platform play with this game itself either. So I can't play one on a PlayStation computer, etc. Which is fine, I guess. But if I don't have enough player base on my system to do it, then why am I going? How am I going to get games going? How am I going to enjoy it? Uh, the mastermind is basically able to drop zombies and other creatures around to help slow down and kill the players, and then the players can go by upgrades in certain areas and essentially try to run out of the area. And they go on from like one area to area two to area three till they're out. And gosh like when i played it the first round i played i guess the person who was the mastermind because i was a survivor they didn't know what they were doing so me and the squad got through it like nothing i also noticed not a lot of people in chat no big deal that does happen when you do randoms like this but the other thing is and this is where i got a little worried about this genre or this idea that they were doing is that the second match i played the mastermind took us out within like a minute and that was kind of sad you know and i don't know if it's because i don't know the game very well and neither do the other survivors if the mastermind gets more powers the higher level they are but literally he threw up two zombies that almost killed us right off the bat we got past that and it was just zombie 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 to where we couldn't push forward so that made it almost not fun the third game i third match i played we were able to get out of the first area but then i think they Whoever it was sacrificed that first area to beef up the second, because then the second area, it was kind of the same thing. The first couple of zombies took us out, and we're trying to get back up, and we just couldn't go past anything in the second one. So, 
again, I think that one needs a rework if they're going to push that as anything. But I love the type of games because, like I said, I'm big into like Friday, Friday the 13th and uh, Dying Light, and or I'm sorry, Dead by Daylight. But it's just, I don't know. I don't think, I don't think Resident Evil should have a place here. Uh, this one is called Resident Evil Resistance or Biohazard Resistance is the name of the game if you want to check it out. Uh, but yeah, it wasn't sold on me, not something I'm going to go back and pick up again. So it, it was a huge miss. Uh, and again, Capcom has done plenty of misses, so they're not impervious to that. But check it out, guys. See what you think. And again, I hope you enjoyed this little brief history of Resident Evil and my strong opinions of Resident Evil 3. Go play it. It's worth it. Watch our stream. We do have it streamed right now. We've been two hours of it up of uh, gameplay up online right now on our Mixer account, our YouTube account, and our Facebook, all of which is at official GYGO. So go check those out, guys. And remember, stay geeky, and y'all have a great one.